This morning we read that Jesus set his face to go to Jerusalem. That means he had resolutely accepted his destiny, which would include his sacrificial death in that city. Up to this point in Luke's gospel, Jesus has gathered disciples, taught with parables, and performed miracles. And he will continue to do so. But these will be things he does as he makes his way to his final destination. A few verses earlier in this same chapter, Jesus foretells his death, after which he is transfigured before his disciples and followed by still yet another foretelling of his sacrifice. It's as if he is not only informing them about his own appointment with his fate, but also trying to be clear about what they may be getting themselves into. And so in this morning's passage, we, we focus on what it's really like to be a disciple of Jesus and what sort of things tend to distract us and get in the way of discipleship. Now, in order to go from Jerusalem, from Galilee to Jerusalem, they had to go through Samaria. But as we all know, Jews and Samaritans weren't the best of buddies. And one of the things that separated them was their belief about where a person should worship. Samaritans believed that a person should worship at Mount Gerizim. But Jews believed good and right worship could only happen in Jerusalem. So when the Samaritans learned that Jesus and his band of followers were on their way to Jerusalem, the citizens of that Samaritan village gave them the cold shoulder. Sounds kind of petty, doesn't it? But even more trivial things than this has provided people of faith reasons to give others the cold shoulder. Some believe people should be excluded because of who and how they love. Others believe women should be excluded from some parts of worship. And still others believe their path to God is the only right and true path. And if you believe differently, well, praying that God would command fire to come down from heaven to consume these sinners, heretics, and infidels is within the realm of possibility. Ironically, religion, the very thing that is supposed to create a sense of community, often separates us from each other. Instead of love, peace, and compassion, it gives way to attitudes of self-righteousness and conflict. Such was the case in Jesus' day, and such continues to be the case today. Next, Jesus encounters someone who promises to follow Jesus wherever he went. One gets the sense that the person knows nothing about Jesus or his mission, but maybe he had learned they had lots of potlucks and served up some really good chocolate chip cookies. Or maybe the person received the respect and compassion from Jesus that they had never received from any of their own people. Or maybe they saw discipleship as eternal fire insurance, so to speak. Follow Jesus and they managed to avoid an eternity of hellfire and damnation. Maybe they had heard rumors that Jesus had said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light and that sounded real nice to them. But Jesus gives the person a reality check and points out that discipleship is not all roses and daffodils. He doesn't even know where he will be sleeping from night to night. And those who say they love him will, in fact, betray him. And next he gives examples of two people who seem to be ideal for the job opening as a disciple. They apparently were clear about what it would entail. 
and they were interested in the position, but first they had some things they had to attend to. Things that appear to be very valid in my opinion. One needed to tend to the burial of their father and the other simply wanted to say goodbye to their family. But Jesus had a mission to accomplish, an urgent mission. And there was no time for delays of any kind. The time was now. No time for any but firsts. A week ago, the board of directors sat down and evaluated the church's mission. We took a look at who we are and what we believe God has called our church to be doing. We came up with five priorities, those being spiritual development, inclusive and creative worship, compassion ministries, taking a stand for justice, and providing a sense of community and connection. Upon an honest self-appraisal, we came to the conclusion that there are things that have gotten in the way of accomplishing our mission, things that have taken priority over our mission, things that have become a distraction causing us to shift our focus away from the urgency of our mission, away from being our best and from doing what God has called us to do. That's called confession. And so we committed ourselves to change. We refocused on our mission and we talked about how we as a church can do better. And hopefully you will begin to notice some changes in each of these areas and soon. That's called repentance. What should be taking priority in your own life? What is keeping you from being your own best self? What areas could use some improvement? Maybe life has become one task after another and you're just plain tired. Maybe God has been calling you to take a break from the rat race and experience Sabbath rest. Have you responded by saying you will certainly do that? You're even looking forward to it. But first, but first I need to take care of this person. But first I need to check off some things from my to-do list. But first, maybe God would like it if you started loving yourself more. Well, that certainly sounds good, and I would definitely like to love myself more than I do, but first, but first I need to shed a few pounds. But first I need to find a counselor I can afford to work on my self-esteem. But first, maybe God wants you to get out of yourself and start loving your neighbors in a way that impacts their lives and we respond to God with words like I understand where you're coming from and I would really like to contribute to the agencies that are making a difference but first I need to get my own finances in order or I would really like to volunteer more of my time but first I need to find enough free time in my schedule to do so but first Or maybe God is simply asking you to follow Jesus. That's what Jesus was asking in our scripture passage. Just follow him. Well, well, yeah, sure, but first tell me about what you expect from me. But first tell me what my future will look like if I do. But first... Though they may sound like valid reasons to us, our but firsts are usually nothing more than delay tactics. Excuses for avoiding the unknown, rationale for maintaining the status quo 
of our day-to-day existence. All too often, complacency is the easier, softer way that we choose over taking the risks that go along with being our best selves, obeying God, and following Jesus. But there's no room for complacency in God's kingdom. On the contrary, there's a sense of urgency. There are people who are literally dying for a glimpse of God's presence in our world. And we, you and I and this church, have been called to reflect God's presence to others. At this church, we feel that following Christ means making available opportunities for spiritual development, offering inclusive and creative worship experiences, taking a stand for justice, embodying a sense of community and connection, and providing compassion programs and ministries to the community at large. But what does following Christ look like for you as an individual? Instead of trying to figure it all out, maybe you only need to figure out what the next step is. What does following Christ look for you like for you in the short run? What is God wanting you to do just for today? And what is keeping you from doing that? Is it fear of the unknown? Maybe you're afraid it will mean change and no one likes change. Is it fear of having even less money or time than you already have? Maybe you're afraid that following Christ means your finances will suffer or you'll have even less time to spare than you're currently willing to sacrifice. Maybe you have every intention of following Christ, but first, may we throw off the chains and shackles that bind us and keep us from being our best selves. And may God grant us the courage to follow Jesus, trusting that all shall be well and all shall be well, and all manner of things shall be well. Amen.